The Spirit of God is with you and also with you. Welcome to this virtual gathering of Washington Avenue Christian Church. My name is Nathan Russell. My pronouns are he and him, and I serve this congregation as its senior pastor. Thank you for inviting and welcoming us into your various viewing locations for The Alternative, an online gathering to reconnect with God and with one another. You are welcome and wanted here and wherever you may be, just however you are. Together we will sing, hear, pray, share, and commune. Our director of worship and the arts, Evan Collins, will lead us in the hymns and the lyrics will appear on your screen. We hope you will do whatever helps you create meaning and connect with the divine in new ways, alternative ways, ways that are life-giving, loving, and liberating. On the left-hand side of your screen is a QR code. You can scan this code with a smartphone or smart device. With the website that opens, you can do three different things. First, register your attendance. Second, submit a prayer request. And third, give online. When you use the QR code to register your attendance, you can tell us how you are creating meaning and deepening your faith, which we are always very glad to hear. If you're not sure about using the QR code, don't worry. There are links in the below video description that do the very same thing. We are in the season of Pentecost, a time for celebrating the gift of God's abiding presence. Our curtains are green. The candles are already glowing by God's divine spark. And now we ring this chime. to clear the air, because our worship of God is about to begin. As we prepare to lift our hearts, will you join me in a query? A query is an ancient practice of inviting reflection. You can engage this prompt by yourself with a viewing partner in the live chat that's off to the side or with me on Twitter using our church's handle at W-A-C-C-E-L-Y-R-I-A. The prompt is this. Describe God's peace. Destruction through the night Where pride of 
prey, sensation and blindness doing your way. Deliver every nation, eternal God, we pray. Lord, strengthen all who labor that we may find release from fear of rattling saber, from death of wars increase. When hope and courage falter, your still will be heard. With faith that none can alter, your servants undergird. Keep bright in us the vision of days when war shall cease, when hatred and division give way to love and peace. Till dawns the morning glorious, when truth and justice reign, and Christ shall rule victorious o'er all the world's domain. A reading of one of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 14 through 22. Listen for the word of God stirring within and beyond these words of Scripture. For Christ is our peace. In his flesh he has made all into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. Jesus has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself a single new humanity in place of Gentile and Jewish believers, thus making peace and that he might reconcile all to God in one body through the cross, putting to death hostility through it. So Jesus came and proclaimed peace to y'all who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through Jesus, all of us have access in one spirit to the creator of all. So then, you all are no longer strangers and aliens, but you all are citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built up on the foundation of the persons who were apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In Christ, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Messiah, in whom you are also built together, spiritually, into a dwelling place for God. For the promise and covenant of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news, we say together, thanks be to God. True story. Evan and I are recording this broadcast of The Alternative on Tuesday, November 8th. Just a few feet from this uh, worship set, people are entering the building to cast their ballot. Today has already been interesting, from people displaying signs where signs are not allowed, to some so-called election workers showing up to watch, I don't know, paint dry, to people creating their own parking spaces regardless of the well-delineated lines, But I digress. A few hours from now, our elders and board will meet. By the time these gatherings end, election returns will fill our news feeds. And no matter what, the world to which we wake up on Wednesday will look different than it does today. The partisan climate will feel different no matter which political party has the majority in one or perhaps both houses of Congress. But, but now, meaning Wednesday, November 9th, a few minutes after 7 p.m., we have gathered online to worship God. It is tricky in ways I do not like to plan, play, preach, and present a gathering of worship when the climate of our politics is sure to shift in ways we cannot fully imagine, or perhaps we don't want to imagine. 
When I read the lectionary text for tonight, I breathed a sigh of relief, kinda, with these words. For Christ is our peace. It's really easy right now when partisan politicians go around talking about a militarized peace or law and order and free and fair elections and yet arm people with military-style weapons to stand outside polling places or raid the Capitol building or break into Speaker Pelosi's San Francisco home and assault her husband or march around the home of Associate Justice Brett Kavanaugh with guns that things are anything but peaceable right now. Because of the tenor of our partisan politics, it's easy for us to think that if our candidate wins, then we win. Or if our candidate wins, they'll bring in a new era of peace. I am super grateful that wannabe Paul, in writing this letter to the Illyrians, I mean Ephesians, with a reminder that Christ is our peace. If we count on the empire to be our peace, we are sure to be disappointed. And yet, if we depend on Christ to be our peace, we are sure to be rewarded, not in the sense of winning or coming out on top, but rewarded in that we participate in the future God wants and ultimately will have. Scripture is full of passages about peace. One of my all-time favorites is from the Gospel of John. The disciples are freaking out because Jesus, who has been with them for almost three years, is talking in a strange way. He's preparing to leave, and the disciples cannot wrap their minds around that. Thomas boldly responds to Jesus saying, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus answers Thomas saying, I am the way, the path, the road, the journey. That verse is not some exclusive mandate of, you know, it's Jesus or nothing else, but rather an invitation to follow a certain way, call it the way of peace. Just after that verse, Jesus says to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. We need these words on election day, and we certainly need them the day after. The peace that Jesus gives isn't the pseudo-peace of partisan politicians. No, the peace that Jesus gives is one freely offered. And that goes against our intuition, especially in America. Jesus presents a difficult teaching, difficult only because it is countercultural, But his lessons are designed so that when this world seems as if it is going to hell in a handbasket, we may have peace. Jesus says, in the world you face persecution, but take courage, beloved. I have conquered the world. Such peace does not come in riding on the wheels of inevitability, but bearing the marks of crucifixion. Want to be Paul gets this and says, Jesus has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself a single new humanity in place of the Gentile and Jewish believers, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile all to God in one body through the cross, putting to death hostility through it. According to wannabe Paul, the goal of Jesus' death on the cross was to create a new humanity in place of the divided one. Such a creation cultivates peace because it puts hostility to death on the cross. That's loaded theology right there, 
But I think I can summarize it in saying that if we think the work of God in the world is going to be accomplished by partisan politicians, we are most to be pitied, and we will be ultimately disappointed. However, if we understand that the reconciling and transforming work of God in Christ Jesus has already been set in motion, then we can work toward a certain peace, vote toward a certain peace, and testify to a peace that is not of this world, but is indicative of the world that is to come. God's reign of justice and joy, peace and shalom. When my younger brother and I were kids, we'd get in arguments like any siblings. We'd fight, but never violently. And yet our skirmishes would often irk our parents enough so that both my brother and I would find ourselves um, sentenced with a week or more of grounding. Sometimes my parents would say, stop and peace. And Joseph and I would end our quarrel. But just because we stopped fighting did not mean that the conflict was resolved. Rather, we just had more time to stew in our rooms. When Jesus talks about peace, or shalom to use the better word, we must understand that peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice. If people do not if people do not have not just like equal but equitable access to the promised ideals of our democracy, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, we will not have peace. To be clear, I don't think we can vote in the reign of God, but I do think how we vote can delay its dawn. As of this recording, I don't yet know what our world will be when, when this broadcast premieres. And yet, no matter the outcome, I do feel that we are pretty far off, not only from our ideals as a country, but also very far off from God's promised future. Maybe you feel differently than I do, and that's totally fine. Perhaps for you, the future God wants and ultimately will have is so close that you can almost taste it. Want to be Paul has encouraging words for us. Jesus came and proclaimed peace to y'all who were far off and peace to those who were near. I'll take it any day of the week, most especially on election day and uh, the day thereafter. No matter the result of Tuesday's election, we have a bold endeavor that Jesus has set before us. We are to walk in the ways that are peaceable and encourage more peace. Sometimes that means we have to vote in a certain way. Other times it means we have to call out behavior policies, and ideas that are antithetical to the justice and joy, peace, and shalom of God. Wannabe Paul is hell-bent with breaking down the barriers of left and right, Jewish and Gentile, blue and red. And let me just say that this whole idea of mixing red and blue to get purple doesn't quite work, because what single color represents the reign of God? We need every color of God's rainbow present and accounted for, not blended into a color that we are not. When when the diversity of colors is welcomed, wanted, affirmed, and respected, and no one's right to exist or be who God created them to be is denied, maligned, or rejected, then we will live into what wannabe Paul said so very long ago, that we are no longer strangers and aliens, 
but we are citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built up on the foundation of the persons who were apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. I look forward to worshiping with you for the premiere and hearing these words anew as an invitation to remember that Christ is our peace. Christ's peace is already here within the church, and we, as disciples of Christ, can let that peace loose from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. May we do it. Amen. courage that we dare to practice peace each day. We must confess that Jesus' words, they know not what they do. Expose our shared complicity as we our sins Now we turn to our prayer of the people, which is an alternative to the ways in which we normally pray. This prayer is not passive, but active. This is a body prayer, one that will engage our full selves, and I invite you to participate in ways that are helpful and create meaning for you. So for our first move, will you bring your fingers together in a grip and pull as hard as you can from the left and the right, and let us pray. Do you feel this tension we've just created in our hands, O oh God? It's but a metaphor for the tensions in our country and world. There's constant pushing and pulling, and all of it is an effort, a lust for power and control, not to do what's good, right, or just. And here's the thing, as much as we bemoan this tension, we can get caught up in it too. So hear our prayer. We know tension can be a good thing, a creative thing, a necessary thing. The tension just has to be cultivated and regulated like strings on a piano. Don't wipe away all tension because that would render us useless. Instead, tune our tension so that we can sing the melodies of peace. For our second move, will you put your fingers together and integrate them into both of your hands and let us continue our prayer. We admit, O oh God, that we like to label people R, D, I, red, blue, but you don't do that. You created all of us in your image 
and not one of us is the same. Help us to see all creation as a collage of your wondrous diversity rather than a difference that needs to be blended or fixed. Weave us together in mutuality. Help us to grasp a sense of the peace that you offer the whole wide world and then live into it and make it happen and share it, not in uh, colonizing ways, but in ways that are mutual, self-giving, and open. The peace you embody was never meant to be just for us, and certainly not for individuals, but for the whole wide world. Lead us toward your peaceable kingdom, toward the future you want and ultimately will have. Now for our final move, will you bring your hands toward your heart in a posture of devotion and let us continue our prayer, saying together, Holy One, our only home, blessed be your name. May your day dawn, your will be done here as in heaven. Feed us today and forgive us as we forgive each other. Do not forsake us at the test, but deliver us from evil. For the glory, the power, and the mercy are yours, now and forever. Amen. This table, beloved, is at the center of the peaceable kingdom. And Jesus the Christ, who is our peace, invites the whole wide world here That invitation is so inclusive that it may be hard for some of us to swallow. But we can practice eating at that table here and now. So when God does get everything God wants, we can welcome God's peace and shalom. On the night Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room, He first washed his hands, and then looking upon the table, he found gifts of both grain and grape. And taking the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks for it, said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we taste the fruit of the one who is our peace. Come, beloved, you are welcome and wanted here. Everything is ready. Go into the world, beloved, and make a plain declaration and a public demonstration of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news of Jesus Christ. Embody this gospel that is alternative to the ways of the world because the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth. 
and too small for anything but love. Remember that you are never, ever very far from God's heart. And finally, finally trust with everything you've got and all that you are that the future God wants and ultimately will have is here and now, even as it is still on its way. Amen.